so many people experience lower back pain even when they're squatting, even when their form is right. But why is this happening? In this video, I'm going to be explaining you everything you need to know and do in order to prevent lower back pain. Because I'll tell you something, having lower back pain, and I'm talking about pain, it is not normal yeah. during exercises. So we can easily fix it. Okay, so let's take into account that your squat form is right, meaning that you're doing everything together. You're not really overextending your spine. Your spine is quite neutral. You're not squeezing too much at the top. Also another important thing, a lot of people actually think and we do this subconsciously sometimes i do it as well we just stick our bum out like the chickens or something like we're just throwing it back at the club like a during a mating call how do you want me to say it some people they start already overextending their spine a little bit too much okay so that's me for example standing straight and that that's them already automatically without even thinking sometimes and then that's why i want you to pay attention sometimes i've done it okay so it's just quite normal to happen they start the squat movement like this okay super overextending Okay, the lumbar spine. So when they squat, it's like they're just basically throwing it back at the club. And <laughs> we cannot do this at the gym because that's why we start hurting your lower back indeed. So with any sort of exercises, try to always remember instead of like already starting the movement like I'm just walking like this because you wouldn't do it when you're walking, right? So why would you do it when you're squatting? Start with a neutral position and go down rather than look at the difference. Okay, I want you to pay attention. That's me just going down in a neutral spine, but that's me going down <laughs> throwing it back at the club which we do not want to do because it will start hurting our back okay so we have our spine more neutral more stable what's the other thing if our form is right and we're not really squeezing at the top because again this compromise our smile you're not bracing and you'll be like yeah, what, the what the hell is bracing i'm gonna do an experiment with you familiar i have a can here an open as you can see okay Obviously, it's not opened. I'll put it here. And I want you to watch what's going to happen. We'll prove the point with our little experiment. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to climb on top of it with all my weight. With all my weight. Obviously, like, it's very hard to balance on top. But this is me with all my weight, right? Okay. Now, as you can see, the can was fine. All it did is, you know, how do you say in English? This thing just didn't go all the way like this. It stayed stable. It stayed the same. And it could sustain a lot of amount of weight, which is because I weighed like 70 kilos or something like that. So it could sustain my weight and be completely fine. Because why? The can is full. Now, let me open this. I actually want to try what flavor it is as well. I just literally got this for the sake of the video. What is even this? Vitamin C. I don't know how I feel about this, but let me keep drinking it basically. Okay, I, <laughs> I downed this thing and now I feel like I need a bee so badly. But anyway, glue, glue, glue. <laughs> anyway, never mind. So you see, like the can has been open. I drank it. There is nothing in. Put it here. The can is not full anymore and see what happens when I put a heavy weight on top of it. Obviously, <laughs> that was so loud, by the way, so embarrassing in the gym. Obviously, I don't say this is what is going to happen to you because the ratio of weight times this is different. But it's to make you understand the difference that your body can make when it's full, like the difference that the can would make when it was full. Basically, what I was doing before is explaining the concept of bracing. If our core is nice and stable and full of air, like the can was before, we are more likely to be able to sustain more weight, okay? easily and without hurting our lower back because our core will be nice and full automatically our spine will be neutral and nice and strong for us okay if we're not bracing during the squat not only will be harder for us to squat but also our lower back can really try and help and that's when you start injuring it okay and that's why it hurts if you brace correctly no matter what you should not have any lower back pain okay remember the experiment of the can that we did before but how do we brace? What is bracing at this point? You'll say, Chiara, what the hell? Okay, that, that makes sense. But how do we brace? Bracing is close to breathing correctly as such. Obviously, it's not just breathing, okay? But it's basically engaging our diaphragm. By diaphragm, diaphragm in Italian, okay? And let's not test me in English or like this, okay? <laughs> So what we can do is when we breathe, okay, and when we're prepping ourselves, before we go into a squat position, which is where our spine will be the most compromised, we need to make sure our core is nice and strong and full. So what we need to do is try almost to breathe through here, this side of our core. I'm just going to open this so that you know what I mean. 
Okay, I've got my obviously sponsor. It's not like a weird at all. But a lot of people they kind of brace wrong and they just become impregnant. Like they just get almost like they're getting bloated, and that is wrong. That is not correct bracing. What correct bracing is is instead aiming to expand the side, okay, of your core rather than doing this like you're pregnant. Because look, as I do this, what's happening to my lower spine? It's arching. And that's what we don't want, apart from the fact that I look pregnant of eight months, but my eight months baby is actually my food baby, so bulky, leave me alone. We both can see Anyway, what you want to do is practice first and learn how to engage your core correctly, okay, by putting the sides of your hands here and feel it expand, just the side, okay? Then go down and then you can release your core it doesn't have to be as tense anymore this is rule number one when it comes to things like squatting even deadlifting or any sort of similar variations this even lunges as well that have normally a weight on top of you good mornings and all these things okay I think learning how to brace correctly will save you and if you want me to teach you step by step how to do all these things i can personalize a plan for you directly okay i teach my clients all these things so that they walk into the gym confident and they can focus on growing their glutes rather than injuring themselves okay link down below for one-to-one -one on the page another exercise that most people struggle with is the hip thrust they tend to experience lower back pain it's slightly different the technique to what we saw it's nothing to do with bracing as such okay there are a couple of things that i need you to pay attention and it's not even the weight okay because i lift 220 kilos 230 i've done 240 kilos okay and i never had any sort of lower back pain lower back problem so it shows that if you're doing it correctly you should not have or experience lower back pain so one technique that should save you okay with your lower back is learning how to scoop okay this is the scoop method that there is different methods of hip thrust okay but this is the safest let me just show you and this is another thing that i show to my lovely clients they see in the video i did this similarity pretending that you're a bee right it's actually very funny but what you do and what i tell them is i want you to imagine that you're a bee okay with my clients we have fun and we explain things easy and so i want to do to you because i feel like working out is already hard itself so i always want to break it as easy as possible for people so that they see the fun of it and that it can be easier and fun already okay pretend that you're a bee or a wasp you want to be a bad bee you can be like a wasp okay you must sting someone that you don't like what do you do you have the thing what's it called the little thing that comes out from the bee that the thing that stings the stingy bit in italian is called pungiglione i never know how to say it in english anyway you know what i mean the little thing called in the bee the stings you want to sting this thing, this person, your ex, anything that you can imagine, okay? It's someone really bad that, that hurt you. So what you do is just that you tilt your pelvis in, okay? You, it's like you tilt and you, it's like you want to sting them, right? So that's what you do and you imagine that you're doing. And I want you to apply the same principle with your hip thrust, okay? How do we do it? Instead of standing completely straight when you come up, I want you to do exactly the same thing, okay? Tilt your pelvis inwards. So that's me standing straight and it's me tilting my pelvis inwards okay doing this little thing will eliminate any back engagement and help you instead focus more on your glutes which is what we want right another thing that is really important while you do this is that you tuck your chin in okay and then you look forward mostly you want to tuck your chin in because when you do this it's just easier okay and also this will avoid you from going back too high because if you go too high you'll start overextending your spine you don't actually need to go that height as long as your glutes achieve their full range of motion you don't have to worry about your butt going to the sky okay we're not flying okay what is it buzz light ears here <laughs> no we're not aiming for the sky okay we're aiming for bunda gains so it's exactly the same thing when you hold the weights obviously i'm not doing it now with the weight because i want you to see me watch me i don't want anything to cover me and what you'll do you'll tuck your chin in so chin tucked in you look forward and push see this is where i stop instead of going all the way there okay that's it that's all you need to do and that is great for your glutes i'm squeezing my glutes as much as possible i can't go any more than this this is my full range of my glutes and then i come down so there you go from me yeah this is what you need to do in order to stop having lower back pain for your hip thrust and 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 it's the same principle by the way i wanted to quickly add for the 45 degree back extension when you arch your back okay the reason why you arch 
your back is so that you don't have lower back engagement too much, okay? That's why when you do that 45 degree glute bias exercise, you round your back so much because it kind of prevents your lower back from getting involved during this exercise. Another exercise that people struggle with in terms of engaging your lower back a little bit too much and experiencing lower back pain with this exercise is the cable kickbacks or any sort of kickback variation, okay? So how do we fix it? I'll show you first of all what people tend to do and this is for both of, it, of the exercises. So I'll select a weight, strap my ankle, so that's how you should do. And this is what people do, so do this push as hard as they can okay but sometimes one one reason can be that you're using momentum okay what is momentum it means that you're almost pushing the weight maybe because the weight is too great okay you're pushing something that is too heavy for you to lift so you're almost swinging okay to help the movement okay it's almost like this i don't know if you can see you're using momentum that's what it's called normally your whole body needs to be stable it can't move it shouldn't move imagine you're a statue okay the only thing that it needs to move is the limb that you're going to use to do the exercise, aka the leg. Nothing else needs to move. I can't start moving either my head backwards, neither my spine should arch while I do this. Imagine again, you're a statue. The only thing that is put in the work is the leg because that's how it should be. You're training your legs, right? So no other movement from any other parts of your body. So there is different types of kickbacks as well. There is the kickback indeed, okay, where you go backwards where for this i would expect you to lean a little bit more forward and kick to the side okay another mistake is the range of movement because people tend to kick so far away sometimes that it just messes up with your balance and you honestly don't need to kick that far away in order to feel the movement in your glutes less is more sometimes okay i want you to hold onto the machine so that you're more stable you look down so your neck is also neutral you're not doing anything like this okay neck is nice and neutral we're looking down and the only thing that is moving is my leg i'm squeezing and then coming back. That is all I need to do. This is enough range of motion. You don't have to go any higher, okay? And the same thing for the 45 degree cable exercise, okay? Same thing for that. I will always try and hold onto the machine for more stability, okay? You don't have to, you can hold just with one hand and do exactly the same thing. This is the movement that you have to do. You don't have to kick to I don't know where. I'm already achieving full range of motion by doing this. Anyway, Familia, if you want me to coach you and if you want me to create a personalized plan for you and I can also review your form so you can send me actually workout videos so I can tell you what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right. That's how I teach my clients and how to exercise about nutrition, etc. Don't forget that I do one-to-one -one online coaching. So link in bio for this. But anyway, I hope this quick video helped you. Hopefully it did. Let me know if you need any help with all the other exercises. So see you next time with another video. Ciao, Familia.